Uh, next in our trek here uh, is the uh, last uh, person that they, they want. So there's five major uh, uh, folks that they're focusing on here. And Richard, uh, Richard uh, Swinburne here is the last guy they want us to, to consider. Uh, the diversity, they tell us, of evidentialist apologetics would not be well represented without some notice of the work of Richard Swinburne. So from uh, 1977 to 1981, Swinburne, who was a British philosopher, published a trilogy of books in defense of theism. And then in 1989, he launched a four book series defending specifically Christian beliefs. And so these seven books constitute, uh, they tell us, the most sophisticated evidentialist defense of Christianity to appear so far. So again, it's dangerous to listen to this podcast because as we're supposed to be taking books off our shelves, we might be putting seven more on top of this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, in 1996, he published, Is There a God?, in which he offered a more popular level statement of his apologetic. Swinburne uh, summarizes his argumentation at the beginning of the book. He says, scientists, historian, historians, and detectives observe data and proceed thence to some theory about what best explains the occurrences of these data. We can analyze the criteria which they use in reaching a conclusion that a certain theory is better supported by the data than a different theory. That is more likely on the basis that uh, that data would be true. So everyone does this. Historians, scientists, detectives, uh, uh, what you want to eat for dinner, uh, all these <laughs> things uh, come because you bring in the data, you look at it, and then you make the best uh, uh, inference to it. And there, are, uh, there's argumentation to be made of, you know, uh, what influences uh, uh, come to you from the outside and the inside. Uh, but what he's saying here is that uh, as, as, as it comes to uh, uh, big important uh, things in our lives like science and history and, uh, and, and murders uh, and, and crime, uh, they take in uh, this data and then um, uh, figure out which theory best uh, explains the, the, the data for all, all that's come in. Well, using those same criteria, we find that the view that there is a God explains everything we observe, not just some narrow range of data. It explains the fact that there is a universe at all, the scientific laws operate within it, that it contains conscious animals and humans that very complex intricacies organize bodies, and that have abundant opportunity for developing ourselves and the world as well as the more particular data that human report miracles and have religious experiences. So all those things from, from the creation of the universe down to us, down to the fact that there are claims of religious experiences and miracles, all those things uh, form together, which uh, uh, the existence of God uh, explains it the very best. Well, then the very same criteria which scientists use to reach uh, their own theories leads us to move beyond those theories to a creator God who sustains everything in existence. Right. And so Swinsburne's uh, central apologetic argument is that the existence of this God is significantly more probable than not. Right? He contends that the existence of God provides a simple, powerful explanation of what we already know. He says it remains passing strange that there exists anything at all. But if there is to exist anything, it is far more likely to be something with the simplicity of God than something like the universe with all of its characteristics crying out for explanation <laughs> without there being God to explain. It, right? mm -hmm. So God is the best explanation of all of the various facts that we see. Right. Well, he admits that it is always possible to challenge this or that element of his or any other theist argument. He points out, though, that th that uh, this is also true in science, history and politics. So we can't say uh, we absolutely know this to be the case because you can say, but do we? Because we've always said that for previous things in science and history and politics. But life is short and we have to act on the basis of what such evidence as we have had time to investigate, he says, and uh, to uh, show on balance to be probably true. So he says, uh, we can't just wait until time X uh, for us to uh, make the determination of is there a God or is there not, uh, uh, just as we can't do that for uh, the evidence for um, 
for evolution or uh, or uh, relativity or for uh, um, um, whether or not uh, 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 Caesar crossed the Rubicon. All these things have to kind of you have to make the determination at, at, at a good point if you have enough available data to you. And it seems like all of history, all of creation, all of uh, um, the the uh, eyewitness evidence and external reports uh, lead us to have the at least the ability to make the claim here and now of whether or not God is true. And he's going to posit that uh, it is true that God exists. Right. And, and of course, we just saw this same claim with Clark, uh, similar claim anyway, with Clark Pinnock, right? He makes a similar claim. Uh, now, where Swinburne says life is short, and so we have to make a decision, Pinnock says basically the same thing. We can't accumulate all of the evidence. Uh, and then because there are vitally important issues that we need to make decisions on. So this is a real similar type of claim that we just saw with uh, with Pinnock. 